Bowl selection preview time here on Blue White Update. We kicked out Steve Jones. We kicked out Trey Bauer. We brought in some young guys not afraid to share their opinion. Coming up right now. Welcome to Blue White Update to my left. That is not Trey Bauer. That is not Steve Jones. That is Corey Geiger of Sports Central on ESPN Radio and of the Altoona Mirror. And Brian Tripp, host of Sports Talk on ESPN 1450 and State College. Guys, welcome to the program. Hi, how's Good. everything going? Right off the bat, season recap of Penn State. Disappointing loss the way it ended against Michigan State. Well, to me, I love Michigan State. I think Michigan State's an excellent team. But 6-6, uh, six and six, that's kind of where most of us thought they would end up being. I think it's a disappointing 6-6 six and six because uh, I think that they regressed. They really didn't get any better. But at the end of the day, 6-6 six and six is where most of us kind of thought they'd be, and that's where they are. Yeah, I agree with Corey. I think in the beginning of the year, you envisioned a team starting at that game against Ireland and having some success. Then expectations changed because they continued to have success through non-conference play. To start 4-0 and then finish at 6-6, six and six, I think that is a little bit of a disappointment the way the team played down the stretch. However, in the end, that's about where everyone pegged them. Yeah, for me it was a loss to Maryland, a loss how they lost to Michigan and, and things like that. Illinois, no excuse for that. But the pinstripe ball, that's where they're going. Penn State back in New York City. Penn State, a rich tradition of playing in New York City. A lot of ties there. The senior day pitcher that they sent out. Everybody looks happy to be going there. You know, guys, fan base. Well, what's great about it is, like James Franklin said, you open the season in Ireland and you close the season in New York City. We have to think about this from the standpoint of an 18 to 22 year old kid. Uh, I mean, imagine that scenario to open in Ireland, close in New York City, and, and you get the 15 extra bowl practices, which I think is far and away the most important thing about the bowl game. So uh, to me, it, they got to a bowl game, everybody kind of stayed healthy, and, and we'll see if they can make some progress in the bowl. And because they start in Ireland, I think New York gives you an opportunity to have a less expensive bowl trip for fans to go to, especially younger fans, the part of the fan base that's the passionate group of the fan base that people see each and every game yelling in the student section. Those younger fans have an opportunity to make that trip. And that's part of the 107,000 that James Franklin is so proud of. Most importantly for us, we all got to avoid the doldrums of Detroit because nobody wants to go there in December and watch a game inside. I mean, inside would have been nice, but it's just not the same of, Unless you know, northern football. Against Pitt, that would have been good. And Pitt. I don't know that that would have been good for Penn State this year because if you lose to Pitt and start this yeah. first year off under James Franklin at 6-7 and seven with Pitt on the bookend of it, that's not a good way to start. That wouldn't have been a good way to start the dominate the state, dominate the region thing, losing to Maryland and Pitt in the same season. But the fan base, we already talked about it being in Sutter, but the bowl game has a big picture and the practices. How does the seniors go about doing the practices compared to the younger guys? And I, I know that there's a developmental issue with the first-year guys in the system. Well, one thing we will see a lot in, in bowl practices is the seniors won't necessarily be the ones out there doing a lot of the heavy lifting. They'll, they'll be kind of player coaches a little bit. A lot of the younger guys will get a lot of the, uh, the, the practice exposure. And what James Franklin said is that they're going to use the first half of the 15 practices as developmental practices. And again, I think that that is incredibly valuable because over the past two years, Penn State missed out on 30 bowl practices, not getting to go to bowl games. So to get those 15 back this year, I think, and then, you know, however you play in the game will be a springboard as well. But I think that can only help going forward. I think there's a misconception a bit, though, too, that after you see these practices going into the bowl game, that you're going to see a different Penn State team. This is still going to be a very similar Penn State team to when we saw them against Michigan State. Granted, I think they'll have a little bit more success offensively now that you'll have Diefenbach and Smith getting that continuity and the young players continuing to grow. But in this game, it's still going to be Penn State 2014. An old Eastern rival is the team, Boston College. We take a look at the numbers jumping out at you. 250 yards rushing for Boston College per game. That stacks up well against Penn State's rush defense. You see it there highlighted in red. Guys, this is a team that beat USC during the year, but then also got gashed by Pitt. Well, Boston College is going to rely on the run. 
we, we know that. Penn State leads the nation in rush defense. I don't I, Typically teams that only run the ball, and they, and they don't throw the ball well at all, they only average 132 yards passing per game. Teams that can't throw the ball typically don't beat Penn State. But this is a different caliber team because this is a running quarterback. Their, their quarterback, Tyler Murphy, has more than 1,000 yards rushing. So what I'm interested to see, it's not just going to be turn the ball, turn around and hand the ball off to a running back and Penn State can load up on that. I'm interested to see the matchups of what Steve Adazio from BC will try to do to get his quarterback to take advantage of some of those running lanes. BC reminds me of Maryland. That's simple. Yep. Stop the quarterback, you stop BC. When we come back, we take a look at the college football playoff. Did the committee get it right? Welcome back. Blue White Update presented by Coors Light. Corey Geiger, Brian Tripp here with me. We're talking Big Ten Bowl selection as we take a look at where the teams are going. Ohio State, the crown jewel, they're taking on Alabama in the college football playoff. I love the Michigan State Baylor matchup. I think that's a credibility one. Nebraska, USC as well, I think is interesting. And then you look at the bottom tier. Tim Beckman, he's in a bowl game, and we know his record against Louisiana Tech, not so good the last time those two programs met up. But guys, pretty good slate of Big Ten bowl games. Michigan State going up against Baylor, I mean, I think that's really interesting right there. I can't wait for that one. I think Michigan State is really one of the better teams in the entire country. They can do everything offensively. They have a great defense. And Baylor, I think, should be in the college football playoff. But I'm going to pick Michigan State in that. I think Michigan State is a complete team. I think they can shut down Baylor with that defense. So to me, that's outside of Alabama, Ohio State, that's the best Big Ten bowl game. I think when you look at these matchups, no Big Ten team is favored. The Big Ten needs to go 500 in the bowls this year, whether it's winning the top tier bowls or some of the bottom tier bowls. You have to go 500. And if you can win, maybe in the college football playoff, I think Ohio State with its third string quarterback, it would be a major upset to defeat Alabama. If you can win that game, that would go a long way for the credibility of the conference. And Penn State fans should cheer for the Buckeyes. What happens if, Buck, if Ohio State gets beaten badly, which I do think there's a chance, because the, the Big Ten's reputation nationally is not good. And if Ohio State goes in and lays an egg and gets beat by two, beaten by two or three touchdowns, I, I think that makes the Big Ten's national reputation even worse. One team that could really help the Big Ten that a lot of people don't talk about is Minnesota. Minnesota is a very good football team and they take on a team that's played in the SEC championship. That Minnesota team had TCU in the college football playoff up until the last week and guys you know the Big Ten started very rough in September. The whole season could become you know full circle depending how they show up come December and January and Corey you brought up Baylor being in the college football playoff. We take a look at what the college football playoff is right now and there you see it Alabama Ohio State Oregon, Florida State out in the granddaddy of them all out there. And, Corey, I'm with you. I thought Baylor should have been in the college football playoff. And for me, it came down to beating Kansas State, beating TCU, beating Oklahoma. I thought those top three wins were much better than Ohio State's top three wins. Well, here's my problem, and I'm not hating on Ohio State. I have great respect for Ohio State. The eye test that we saw at Beaver Stadium, I thought Penn State outplayed Ohio State. The refs gifted Ohio State 10 points with two blown calls. So... The, the, the Ohio State I got to see that night in October clearly was not one of the top four teams in the country. They struggled badly against an Indiana team that I think is awful. They beat Minnesota by seven, and Minnesota's good but not great. They struggled against Michigan, and then they have the terrible loss to Virginia Tech. I think it's an awful loss. I don't think there's any way, but... The committee says they're looking at the whole body of work. I think that's a flat-out lie. I think they were looking at 59 to nothing, and that's all they considered. And I, I don't think they looked at the whole body of work at all. The great thing about having the committee now is having the eye test. In Ohio State, there is no doubt Ohio State did improve over the course of the season. And to put up that result against Wisconsin with Jones at quarterback, it was completely unexpected. I, I really do think Ohio State deserves to be in the college football playoff, but the proper format is probably six teams. I agree. I think it should be six teams. That way you get all five conference champions in. You give those two teams at the top a bye. I, I, think, I think that would be the perfect scenario. Anybody that wants eight or 16, then you're talking about maybe getting a bunch of two or even three lost teams in. And I think that would devalue the greatness of the college football regular season. The college football regular season, sorry, Andrew, the college football regular season is about getting to that national championship. And never in the history of college football would you say, well, team number seven, they should have been playing in that championship game one versus two. 
If you get all six teams in, then you can include the conference champions if they are one-loss champions. I think we're all pretty much in agreement. You know, expand the college football playoff. I like to do it a little bit different. Take out some of those lower-tier bowl games. Get some of these six and six teams out of the bowl game. Yes, Penn State fans, I do realize that it knocks you out this year. But that's the way I would do it. You guys favor going to the state uh, university-based games and playing them there. Art Bryles, though, you got to like what he said if you're a Baylor fan, basically calling out the commissioner and then calling out the entire process. Well, the Big 12 commissioner, Bowlesby, did not do Baylor any favors at all. Uh, there, he, he even claimed earlier this week that if he had to pick a, a team from his conference for the playoff, it would be TCU. So if you're Baylor, how much of a redheaded stepchild do you feel in your own conference? You beat TCU, and your own commissioner isn't even putting enough value on that win. I hope this puts more of an emphasis on playing someone in the non-conference yep. slate. Coming up, Trey Bauer joins us on the phone, and we take a look at some of the coaching hires around the Big Ten. Welcome back, Blue White Update. Joining us on the phone right now, former Penn State linebacker and captain Trey Bauer. Trey, thanks for being here. No problem, Andrew. Thanks for having me. You're a Jersey boy. Penn State's going to play in New York City. How excited are you for that? Well, I think it's great. I mean, the fact is that Penn State notoriously has done a, uh, a great job of recruiting North Jersey or New Jersey players. Um, Long Island, Connecticut, upstate New York. I mean, it's literally going to be a home game for Penn State. And in my experience, when we played in the Meadowlands, we played three separate times. It was, you know, an 85% Penn State crowd. So I'm excited for the kids. They deserve it. Now, Trey, normally on blue-white tailgate, we're breaking down the opponent. Not so much this time. We're looking back. What were your thoughts on the Michigan State game and how the entire season went for Penn State? Well, I think that, I think it was a, it encapsulized the entire season. Um, was the Michigan State game? I mean, if you recall, I mean it was a, 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 it was kind of a we're excited about the game opening kickoff. They take it to the house. Oh my goodness, what are we going to do? We're going to get blown out. You know, we kind of held them. We it was a very close game. You know, we turned the ball over. You know, to end the uh, end the first half, um, we're down 13-3. You know, we punch one in there. It's a 13-6 or a 13-10 game. That's just a completely different game. But the fact is that the kids just couldn't get it done. Uh, Michigan State was the superior team that day, and you know it's kind of frustrating because you see signs of okay, you know this is a good quality team, meaning Penn State, and then they do things that kind of really hurt them. Trey, as a former player, what are you working on in these bowl practices to not only prep for Boston College, but to also set yourself up for the off season and going into next season? Well, I think you know clearly, um, you know the way we used to do it with Joe was that we would have the beginning of the bowl practice was kind of getting ready for next year. So uh, I'm not sure how James and his staff is going to handle it, but uh, we would kind of concentrate for next year. We would get the younger players involved. Um, they'd be getting a lot of reps in practice, and it's kind of like an audition for next year. You know, as the game approached and you got into like a normal game week, you know that was a completely different animal. That was okay, the guys who are going to be playing in the game, they're going to get all the reps. Um, you know, obviously you're going to uh, analyze the film, your opponent, you know, the things that they do well, and then you're going to, you know, try to uh, practice and, and, and try to prevent them from doing the things that they do well. How important is it, Trey, for Penn State and Coach Franklin to end this season with a winning record? Well, I mean, I think it would be, I think it would be a great thing for them. I mean, the fact is you've got a very young team, You've got an inexperienced team. You've got a brand new staff. You've got, you know, literally four head coaches in the last, you know, four years. I mean, it's been so much for the the current group of seniors. I mean, it, it's kind of like a crapshoot. I think that uh, the fact is, I think if they play well, um, you know, they should win the game. If they don't play well, uh, and Boston College comes more prepared, they're going to win. Um, but I, but I think I think that the bottom line is that it's kind of a send off to the seniors. It's the, the staff getting ready for next year and for the younger guys to get ready for next year. Trey, thank you so much. Can't wait to have you back on the Blue White Tailgate set. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Andrew. Take care. Bye bye. All right, have a good one, guys. Always good to hear from Trey Bauer. Not shy to hold any opinions back on anything. We go into the coaching situation in the Big Ten. Mike Riley going to Nebraska. 
I think it's going to be fascinating because he's going to bring a passing game element that Nebraska maybe hasn't had in a long time. So uh, is, did he have a great success at Oregon State? He didn't, but Oregon State is a very, very difficult job. He doesn't have Phil Knight giving him five, six hundred million dollars like Oregon does, and he's been able to have some success there. So I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what he's going to do bringing that passing game. Well, he automatically now becomes the best program in his state, and I think Mike Riley is a tremendous hire for Nebraska. He's a completely different person personality than what Bo Pelini had and obviously the big job in the Big Ten right now is Michigan and what's going to happen there will Les Miles leave LSU I don't think so is Jim Harbaugh the right guy I don't know that you have to have that Michigan man Andrew to make that next step forward but Michigan is one of those sleeping giants that many people would say and Brady Hoke had tremendous success early with Rich Rodriguez's talent now what can the next coach do with the talent that Brady Hoke has Corey you, you talked about this earlier is Michigan still an elite job I just wonder what kind of job it is I think they're dreaming if they think they're gonna get Jim Harbaugh that's an NFL coach and, and LSU is a much better job in my opinion than Michigan now they're gonna be able to get a, a really good coach but let's remember the Michigan man comment came from Bo Schimmel Beckler who went to Ohio State. You don't need a Michigan man. Go out and hire the best coach that you can get, but I think they're maybe dreaming a little bit if they think they're going to get a, a Harbaugh or a less, a less Miles. And this is a ch tough job because you have Michigan State, Ohio State, and we're still waiting to find out what James Franklin is going to do at Penn State. This is a very tough division to win in, and whoever Mark takes that job. And Mark D'Antonio, who's one of the five or six best coaches in the country. True, guys. And real quick, Jerry Kill, I don't think getting enough of play with the job he's done at Minnesota, obviously has that program on the rise. When we come back, none of us are shy about opinions. We go through the Big Ten bowl slate, and we're going to pick the winners with that and along with the college football playoff. White update presented by Coors Light. Time to play who you got. And guys, we're starting with the best coach in the Big Ten, Tim Beckman and the Illini <laughs> taking Louisiana Tech. Great irony that basically that win against Penn State saved Beckman's job. Uh, I can't pick Illinois ever. I think Beckman is an awful coach. Yeah, I agree with Corey. I know we're taking a lot of shots at Tim Beckman here, but I I'm sure, you know, it would have been appropriate if this game was played in Birmingham because I'm sure he was there going after some of the UAB kids. Oh, oh, oh that's, that is good just that's cold. Man, he is so. sending a Christmas card to James Franklin for helping that's save his job with that, with that Penn State law. Rutgers versus the Academic Fraud University, North Carolina, up in Detroit. I'm going Carolina. I think Carolina's played a lot better the second half of the season after their defense got a little better. I'll go Carolina. Yeah, I'll go North Carolina as well. I'm picking Carolina because still nobody from Rutgers has called me back about having my wallet stolen down there. Still upset about that, Julie. <laughs> Call me back. Nebraska, USC. Uh, I'll go USC. I'm not sure what's going on with Nebraska. They can't really throw the ball. Amir Abdullah is fantastic, but, but uh, I'll go USC. I think USC will have tremendous success passing the ball against Nebraska. Nebraska struggled defending uh, anyone this year running or passing and Cody Kessler is a heck of a quarterback. I like Nebraska just because of Amir Abdullah. I think he's a special back and there are some times when he just makes something out of nothing and I, I really think this is a game for him. I think with a coaching change though it's going to be very tough to win yeah. a bowl game. Any team that's going through a coaching change that's in a bowl it's gonna be tough for them. To they win. can rally behind each other but you're right it's it, the transition can be difficult. I'm depending on what you just said rallying behind you know the staff that's there. Maryland Stanford guys. I like Stanford. Stanford, Stanford put a wallop on UCLA at the end of the year. I, I'll go with Stanford. Yeah, I think Stanford's a very good football team. They're going to play that physical brand, and, and they have a little bit more at this point, I think, than Maryland. We already pretty much covered Michigan State. Baylor, just a winner real quick. Michigan State. Michigan State, one of the best teams in college football, hands down. They can fly on defense. I'm going with Michigan State as well. Missouri versus Minnesota. How did Missouri lose to Indiana? I know it was a different quarterback situation, but uh, I'll go with Missouri. I, I think Minnesota's good. I love Jerry Kill, Kill and what he's done, but I'm going to go uh, Missouri. Jerry Kill would be a major school coach if he didn't have his health problems. I think he's done a tremendous job at a place that's very tough to win. I like Minnesota. I think they've got an excellent running game, and I think they have a pretty good defense. I think that's a credibility game for the Big Ten right, right there. If Minnesota could go in you know, at the Citrus Bowl and get that job done, I think that would be huge for the Big Ten. And then Iowa versus what was the former power known as Tennessee. I'll go Iowa. Uh, I, I think Kirk Ferentz has done a pretty decent job this year. Not a great team, but I think he's done a decent job. I'll go Iowa. 
Tennessee is a team that's building. That's a program to watch for two, three years down the line. I just, I can't pinpoint Iowa this season. Kirk Ferentz, it seems like there's going to be some success there again in the coming years. Uh, but I'm going to go Tennessee in this one. I think the SEC and Tennessee wins this game. I like Iowa. I, I do like how Ferentz preps his team for bowl games. I think they always play a little bit up over their capability. Mm -hmm. Another big one in the Big Ten, Wisconsin, Auburn. What kind of day could Melvin Gordon have against that Auburn defense? I think you'll have a good day, but I think Auburn's going to just really run it up. I think Auburn can score, and I think Wisconsin's still going to be reeling. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go Auburn. You Big. saw what you saw what Jones did for Ohio State against uh, Wisconsin's defense. Nick Marshall is a lot better quarterback. They'll have a big day offensively. Gordon will get his yards, but Auburn's going to win that game. Yeah, Marshall actually went to Auburn to play class and play football down there, unlike Cardell <laughs> Jones. So we'll see how that works out as well. Boise State, Arizona, as we get into the college football play playoff game, one of the big six games. Boise State is fantastic. They can really move the ball. I don't know how much people in this region have followed Boise State because you go blind if you watch games on their blue field. I'm going to pick the upset there. I'm going to go Boise State. Arizona. Arizona, just straight Arizona. Arizona. Nothing. Oregon, Mississippi State. Oh, geez. Florida State, guys. But look at me. I'm, I'm jumping ahead. I'm thinking the SEC favoritism got <laughs> two teams in there. Oregon, Florida State, real quick. I think Florida, I think Oregon kills them by three touchdowns at least. Oregon's defense is fast. Mariota's going to win the Heisman Trophy. Uh, that whole team is loaded. I think Oregon wins the whole thing. Sorry to jump ahead. Here we go. <laughs> Mississippi State, real quick, versus Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech. Mississippi State, why not? I'll go with the triple option. I like Paul Johnson as well. Alabama versus Ohio State. I know, Corey, you already pretty much covered it. I think Alabama beats them badly. Alabama, I think Ohio State would have won with Barrett, but I'll take Alabama. And finally, it's Penn State versus Boston College. Two matchups of former Eastern Powers right there in New York City. Let's finally see the offense get something going. Didn't score 20 points in regulation in all of Big Ten play. 20-17 to 17 Penn State. Boston College is two one-dimensional offensively against one of the best defenses in the country. I'll take Penn State in this one. They said they would get it fixed. They get it fixed for this game. Sam Ficken goes out with yep. a game-winning kick in Yankee Stadium the way it should be. That's all for us. Guys, thanks for joining us here on Blue White Update.